Hey everybody, today we're gonna to talk about hoarding. What is it and why do people do it? But if you're new to my channel, make sure you're subscribed and have those notifications turned on because I put out videos on Mondays and on Thursdays and I don't want you to miss out. But let's jump into this very interesting topic. Much of what we see and hear about hoarding on TV or in other media can be shocking and many people can quickly pass judgment. The scenes of clutter and garbage piled so high that the house is barely habitable can cause us to feel, you know, a little bit of disgust or maybe even pity and think that someone must be crazy, lazy, or just plain dirty. From the outside, it's easy to judge, but we're here to try to understand what it is, what can cause hoarding, and how we can overcome it. In 2013, the DSM-5 added in hoarding disorder, which used to be thought of as part of OCD. Now, people with hoarding disorder have a conscious, ongoing urge to accumulate possessions, as well as corresponding feelings of anxiety or mental anguish whenever those possessions get thrown away. And this is why we cannot try to help them get rid of anything. They find it completely and totally upsetting. Now, the diagnostic criteria for hoarding disorder is as follows. Number one, they have a persistent difficulty discarding or parting with possessions, regardless of the value others may attribute to these possessions. So just because we don't think it's worth anything doesn't mean that they don't find it extremely valuable. Number two, this difficulty that we're talking about is due to strong urges to save items and or distress associated with discarding. So it's because it feels so uncomfortable and distressful for them if they're asked to get rid of something. And number three, the symptoms result in the accumulation of a large number of possessions that fill up and clutter active living areas of the home or workplace to the extent that their intended use is no longer possible. So whatever that item used to do for them, let's say it's a toaster, you can't use it anymore because it's covered with other toasters potentially. And if all living areas become decluttered, it's only because of the interventions of third parties, meaning family members, cleaners, authorities, etc. While some people affected by the disorder accumulate valuable items, most of the people who are affected accumulate things with limited or no real world value, such as books, old magazines, newspapers, or even self-made notes, outdated clothing, or old mail. The hoarding also has to impair our ability to function in our work, school, or social life. So in many cases, the hoarding can create fire hazards, cause financial issues, or even make it impossible for someone to keep up with their personal hygiene. I mean, if your tub is filled with old newspapers, maybe old mail, you can't really properly utilize it. When asked why they keep the items that they do, many hoarders will feel that each item could be needed in the future or that it has some sentimental value to them that others just don't understand. They can even struggle to get rid of other people's things. Like if a friend is moving and wants them to help them go through things, they'll keep everything that they're wanting to give away because they feel that they might need to use it later. They may also feel safer with their items around them and some have even reported that they struggle to leave their home. As to why they feel hoarding disorder, or HD, needs its own diagnosis, research has shown that those with OCD have a different genetic makeup than those with HD. Also, those with HD tend to be oblivious to its effects on those around them and are more likely to have other co-occurring mental health issues like depression, anxiety, or personality disorders. And those with OCD who also show some signs of hoarding do not feel any attachment to their possessions and are completely disturbed by their urge to continue to keep things. They can be really upset at the filth and clutter in their house even though they feel the urge to keep doing it. So it's the complete opposite of someone with HD. They are able to live in a very dirty place and are completely unfazed by it. And finally, the treatment that tends to work best for OCD which is CBT, SSRIs, SNRIs, does not help someone with HD. And the reason that CBT doesn't work is because those with HD are not bothered by their disorder. Therefore, they aren't able to come up with any different behaviors to make it better because they don't really think that it's that bad. So I would guess that it's possibly more closely linked to OCPD versus OCD. Do you remember OCPD, Obsessive Compulsive Personality Disorder? It's egocentonic, meaning it doesn't bug us. It feels true to who we are and what we think about ourselves. And on the other hand, there's egodystonic, meaning it goes against who we feel we are and it bothers us. So hoarding disorder is more egocentonic, doesn't really bother us. But hoarding as part of our OCD is egodystonic. We don't like it and we wish we could stop. 
Research also shows that trauma could cause HD because those of us who've been abused in any way, sexually assaulted, or even emotionally neglected could continue with hoarding as a way to ignore the past trauma. And what I mean by that is that if the trauma is too overwhelming to deal with, we will create another quote unquote problem that's easier to focus on. So it's really just another unhealthy coping skill and or distraction from our real issue. This is why I love research so much. It gives us the ability to understand issues that we may not personally struggle with. And people with hoarding disorder, overall their brain works differently. And therefore they may have a really difficult time getting rid of any items. Now let's get into the exciting component, treatment, because it can get better. So if we worry that we or someone we know has hoarding disorder, what can we do? Because we know that CBT and SSRIs or SNRIs don't really work. And much of what I read still focused on CBT. So what I'm offering to you now is based on what we know could cause it and the treatments that I know can help those things. Does that make sense? Because when I was reading all of the research, I was really disappointed that even though they said CBT hasn't been shown to be effective, there were no other options listed. But if we know it kind of comes out of trauma or emotional neglect, we do have treatment options that can really, really help. And the first and most obvious is trauma therapy. This could mean talk-based therapy, you know, talking through the trauma in detail until it's no longer upsetting and your brain has been given the time needed to process through it. Remember, and roll it away like those marbles and inside out. And if you wonder what I mean by the term process, you can click the link in the description for my video all about it. The next option is EMDR, which stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing which must be done obviously with a licensed professional and someone who specializes in it, but it's when our eyes go back and forth, kind of simulating our REM sleep, which gives our brain more of an opportunity to process through something. So while the EMDR therapist has us doing that bilateral stimulation, they call it, we talk about the trauma or the disturbing thing that happened and give our brain another chance to file it away comfortably. If you want more information about that, you can click the link in the description. I have a video on that too. And the next option is attachment-based therapy, which focuses on understanding what type of attachment we have and using a therapeutic relationship to create a more healthy style. In a way, we're challenging the falsely held beliefs that were created by our upbringing and we're replacing them with healthier ones. In all honesty, once we figure out what causes our hoarding, could be the death of a spouse or parent, loss of a job or home, could be another trauma in our past, whatever it may be, then and only then can we try to heal from it so that our desire to hoard will eventually go away. This video has been brought to you by the Kenyans on Patreon. If you would like to support the creation of these mental health videos, click the link in the description and check it out. I hope that that better helps you understand hoarding disorder. There is so much misinformation out there and it's important that we all seek to understand instead of judge. But as always, is there anything that I left out or something else that you wanna mention? Please let me know in those comments down below because with your experience and my expertise, we will keep working towards a healthy mind and a healthy body. And I will see you next time. Bye.